Welcome to this STM32 tips about embedded bootloader investigation. All the STM32 has an embedded bootloader inside the flash system memory. These bootloaders allow you to connect to your target thanks interfaces like USART, I2C, I2S, USB or CAN. The boot mode of your platform allows to boot on user flash where your code is located, or in RAM, on the last point, on this embedded bootloader. Depending on the part, the boot mode could be defined thanks. Boot to zero pin level, some various option byte, but also it could be linked to the empty flash check mechanism. Boot mode is defined in the reference manual of your MCU, but you can find also all the activation pattern in the AN2606. For this presentation, I will use the Nucleo G474RE, but the principle remains the same for all the STM32. First point is to check in the IN2606 what is the pattern to activate the bootloader. Here it was the pattern 14. Then at the beginning of the application note, you've got the full description of those patterns. In our case, we've got four possible configurations. So I will use the first one. I should ensure that the boot lock option bit is set to zero, the end boot one option bit is set to one, the boot T0 pin should be set to one, and finally the end software boot zero option bit should be set to one. Let's check this configuration on our target. So let's check the configuration of our board. First I launch Cube Programmer, then I connect my board, if I refresh, a stealing should be detected. I've got a serial number, then I connect to the board. I want to check the option byte, so I click in option byte tab. The first one is boot lock. This one is part of security mechanism, so I will find it in the secure protection. Here, we can see that boot lock bit is not set. Perfect. Let's check the two other one and boot one and end software boot zero. Those one would be in the user configuration. Then if you scroll down, you can see end boot one, which is set to one, as we expected, and end software boot zero, set to one also, perfect. So the last point we have to ensure to enter in our bootloader is to set the boot T0 pin to one. The information where is a boot T0 pin could be found in the user manual of your Nucleo, but you can also find this in the blister. Here you will find the boot T0 pin on the pin 7 of the connector 7. On, on this same connector, the pin 5 is to VDD. So if, if I create a shortcut between those two pins, I will set the boot T0 pin to 1. Let's do this now. Okay, now I reset. Now I enter in the bootloader. But the next question is how to be sure that I reactivated the bootloader? Let's now try to answer this question now. You can ensure your bootloader is properly activated by checking the program counter value. This one should be in the range of the system memory address. This range could be found in the reference manual of your MCU. So let's check together the program counter of our target. Just need to connect CPU. And here you can see that the value of the program counter in the range of this internal loader. So it's working fine. If now I set the pin boot T0 to ground and press the reset button, then we can check the core and you can see we are in the range of the flash. So really we show the basic things just to check if the bootloader is properly activated is to check the program counter of your target. Now we know how to ensure the bootloader has been properly activated. The next step is to communicate with this bootloader thanks to selected interface. 
In the IN2606, you will find the list of those interfaces on the associated pinout. For my G4, I can communicate through user1, user2, user3, I2C2, I2C3, I2C4, SPI1, SPI2, and USB. What should I check if I fail to communicate through the selected interface? My first advice would be to create a simple application which communicates through this interface. This will allow you to check the hardware path in your design. Another possible issue is an activity is detected on another interface and the bootloader is waiting on it. As you can see on this diagram extract from the IN2606, the bootloader is scanning the different interface. But as soon as an activity is detected on one of them, it jumps to an infinite loop on this interface. So if you are waiting on I2C, and if an activity is detected on user, it will jump in a loop on the user, and you won't manage to communicate thanks I2C to your bootloader until the next reset. So the scenario of this on zone, we've got the bootloader activated on our target, and now I will communicate with it with the user two, which is in fact through the pin PA2 and PA3, which corresponding to the virtual COM port of my nucleo. So this showing, I managed to communicate with my bootloader. Then I will reset, and I will just manually toggling the pin PA10 before doing anything. And then I will try to communicate with user two again. And let's see what's happened. So we know our bootloader is already started. So now I will just select result interface. Only one come earlier, which is a virtual COM port of my uh, Nucleo. And then I connect. It's some bit slow, but it was working. My memory is reading. And I was able to communicate with my embedded bootloader, okay? So now I will disconnect and reset my board. That means the bootloader is waiting on all the interface. Now I will manually toggle the pin P10 to 1 and set it back to 0. And now Let's try to reconnect thanks user 2. There is some issue. He said that the bootloader doesn't answer. There is something that is not working. Let's try to explain first what is the issue. In fact, the answer is simple. A simple toggle on PA10 pin drives the bootloader to start communication on user 1 why we want to communicate in user 2. Um, as we said, as soon as one interface is activated, the bootloader don't scan anymore the other interface. So that explains the observed behavior. Here is a tip to find which bootloader interface has been activated. If you still have the software debugging link on your target, you can check the register of each IP to understand which interface has been initialized by mistake. This could be done thanks to Programmer. There is a graphical version in beta, but I would recommend the command line. Information needed for this, identify all the potential interface thanks to the IN2606, and to get the memory address on the register size of those interfaces thanks to the reference manual. As previously stated, in the IN2606, I can find all the interfaces of the bootloader for the G4. For the best address and the registers, I can find this in the reference manual. There is a special table with a memory map and peripheral register boundary address. Thanks to information collected, we can build a command line to dump all the register content for each interface. So the first line shows you for the three results, then for the three i square interface, the both SPI, and then the USB full speed.
So the scenario of this land zone, we've got our board that is uh, with the bootloader activated. First, I will dump all the user register. So for the three results, and let's check the value. Then I will connect thank, the user to, then I will dump again those register and see the difference. So we can identify that user 2 has been used. Then I will reset and I will toggle my pin pay turn, okay, which is in fact the TX pin of the user 1. And let's see if it has been detected by the embedded bootloader. And if it is the case, I would say we are stuck on this user 1. It's what I want to demonstrate right now. So first I will launch this command line, just some explanation maybe. We connect through the debugging link. The mode is unplugged, that means we don't reset because we want to have our bootloader just started. And we will read the user one register, user two registers, user three register. So if I just return this, you can see it's quite similar, only one difference with an EAQ, but Nothing major, I would say. If I connect now on my user 2, so as you can see, I was able to communicate with the bootloader. I disconnect, but I don't reset my boat, so my bootloader is still in the same state. And then I will dump again the register. As you can see now on this, you've got some different value here, here, here and here. This is a bot rate register, here you've got the different here queues that happen, here you've got the TX register, that means the value we want to send, and here it was for the prescaler. So I would say we can see that communication had happened on user 2. This was expected, I would say. Now I reset my board, and I launch again the command. To show you, I would say we are in a clean state. And I will now toggle the P10 pin. So I take my wire and plug, set it to one, go back to zero. And now I will dump the register's value. As you can see here, communication has been started. For sure the board rate will not be properly set and such kind of thing, but we can see that there is a start of communication just by toggling the pin. So in, in, if in your design, when you boot up on your board, even in bootloader, if this pin toggle for any reason, then you will be stuck on this user 1. And if I want to communicate with my bootloader with user 2, it will fail because my bootloader detects something on user 1 and gets stuck on this uh, interface. Okay, so I just demonstrated it with user because it's a most simple with Nucleo, but um, I also plug a USB cable on the pair 12 and pair 11 pin, and then I will plug them to my PC. So before I will just dump the register value for the USB. So here, no connection at all. And if I plug now my USB cable, and it has been detected, I would say, by Windows. So if I go just in my Cube Programmer, as you can see here, a port USB has been seen for the fuse, for the FU, sorry. And if I dump again the register, I can see some value, which indicates that the connection has been done on the USB of the bootloader. So that means I can't connect anymore now with my user one. Use that too, sorry. So even use that one won't work. But now, of course, with the DFU and USB, it will work. So this is just tips to make you understand how you can find which interfaces has been activated in your bootloader. If you don't manage to connect to the expected boot interface, maybe an activity on another pin could drive to such kind of situation. If you still have difficulties to connect with a bootloader thanks DFU can interface, I really recommend you to have a closer look in the IN2606. On many boards, you need to have an external crystal to manage to connect through those interfaces. So we have seen together how you can ensure you have properly activated the bootloader and to investigate which 
a communication interface has been initialized. The system embedded bootloader is very useful as ready to use in the chip, but it can be updated. So if during the power-up sequence of your board, some pin level drive to detect the wrong interface, you are somehow stuck. So you really need to think about this during your product definition. The possible workaround, you can jump for the application in the bootloader when you are sure only the pin state will allow to activate the expected interface. This is described in the IN2606, but not possible on other chip. The other possibility is to implement your own bootloader, and you can find some examples in the Cube firmware packages. Here is the link on the IN2606 document, which is a key one, and then all the application notes which describe the protocol to communicate with the bootloader thanks to different interfaces. Thanks for your attention.